Comedies are something that all of us are familiar with and honestly they're an interesting genre that continues to evolve at a ridiculous rate. If you look at each individual decade you can see the formula that audiences really loved at that time and what were getting made pretty consistently. In the 40s and 50s Looney Tunes dominated TVs and cinemas and honestly so much of them still hold up. I loved watching these cartoons growing up and to this day I still adore them. Shame David Zaslav doesn't. Seriously, I, I hate this guy. Why can't Warner Brothers just like do something fun with Looney Tunes? It's such an easy formula to follow. Just make another back in action, you fucking idiots. Sorry. <laughs> I had to get that off my chest. Early 2000s, we had those parody movies which definitely overstayed their welcome. Judd Apatow also dominated for a long time, producing movies like Step Brothers, The 40 Year Old Virgin, and Superbad. That kind of slowed down in the late 2010s. New filmmakers came in to add something different to the comedy space. This is weird comedy, baby. <coughs> Personally, Yorgos Lanthimos is the king of this for me. Poor Things is one of my favourite films ever, and, and other stuff of his, like The Favourite and The Lobster, are brilliant too. I am very excited for his new film. Even smaller directors like Noah Baumbach, I guess, he, I mean, he did write Barbie, he's not really small. And Boots Riley have added their fair share to this with things like The Merowitz Stories and Sorry to Bother You. One day, I will release a video on this movie and it will be the longest video I've ever fucking made. It's gonna be like 30 hours long. But what do you do when a movie's released that has a little bit of all of this? Not that one. This movie is horseshit. It's weird, it's artistic, it's loony. Dear God, it might just be one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. Well, obviously you watch it. This is Mike Cheslick's Hundreds of Beavers. Hundreds of beavers is about, well, I mean, it's about hundreds of beavers. <laughs> Sorry, the film was written by Cheslick and Ryland Brixen Cole Twos, long name. The latter is also the lead of the film. And the story follows Gene Kayak, an Applejack salesman who must become the greatest fur trapper in the world in order to marry the daughter of a merchant. And obviously, this is done by killing hundreds of beavers. <laughs> The film is truly a unique experience, and, and I could gush on and on about why it's so amazing, which I'm going to do, and we're going to take a little dive into why this is such an incredible achievement for Mike. There's no holding back on the comedy in this. I randomly read about it on Twitter one day and was like, yeah, I'll give it a watch, but I really didn't expect to laugh as much as I did. <laughs> it's slapstick, it's in black and white, it's got no dialogue whatsoever. It's kind of similar to Looney Tunes. Make some more fucking Looney Tunes, David! It really is just a homage to those earlier silent comedies, whilst being a reinvention of those types of films. It's a reminder that comedies don't have to be constant arrays of crude humour, edgy jokes or relevant pop culture references. They just have to come from a place of passion and heart. And I mean, they obviously have to be funny too. But when mentioning the elements of the film that make it so funny, you need to dive deep into the behind the scenes of this film, how it was even made. Cheslick and Twos met at high school and they've worked together ever since. They made a film a couple years ago called Lake Michigan Monster. It looks fun. I, I haven't seen it yet, maybe I'll watch it tonight. <laughs> then in 2019 and 2020, they filmed and made hundreds of beavers. Let me just list off some of the facts about this film that are actually insane. It had a budget of $150,000. It was shot over the course of 12 weeks with a six person crew and an additional nine weeks later on. Each beaver suit was purchased from a Chinese mascot website and the production team altered the teeth for each costume. The post-production took two fucking years just for the editing. The music was composed by Two's father, and they basically spent two years running at different festivals. This is all fucking bonkers. For any filmmaker to do one of these things and actually make a good film is wild, but to do all of them. Mike truly are a full package. Not only should you be proud of this masterpiece, but you should also know how much you've inspired thousands of other filmmakers around the world, like myself, to do what we love. Regardless of any restrictions that the world may throw in the way, just follow your ambition and make it happen. Thank you, Mike and Ryland. I guess the big thing to say is watch this movie. It was released on VOD last month, so I'll link it in the description. And just support these independent filmmakers because it is definitely worth every minute of your time. Better than some other comedies that come out this year. It's the unspoken hero of 2024. Mike and Ryland, thank you. I can't wait to see what happens next with you guys, and I reckon you could make a pretty good Looney Tunes movie if David let anyone. Fuck you, David!